Good morning and God bless you. Today is Thursday of the second week of Easter. And our gospel today is from the Gospel of John chapter 3. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of, of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from above is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So there's a couple lines in here that uh, stood out as I was pondering over this Gospel this morning. And it's when the Lord says that his Father does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything over to him. This gospel helps us to understand uh, what it means to live our Christian life in light of the resurrection of Christ. We are to live by this measureless gift of the Holy Spirit. This is what the Father gives fully to the Son. And this is the gift by which Jesus lived his human life here on earth. It was in the fullness of this gift of the Spirit. So how does this happen with us? How does God bring this about? Well, the refrain for the psalm today, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. It makes me think of a, of a moment in the life of Bishop Dudley this very holy bishop. Uh, and he lived in our diocese toward the end of his life. And there were all kinds of stories that came out after he died. And one story that I heard was he was visiting the seminary, a class of seminarians. And he said to them, and I think they were close to being ordained. He said to them, are you poor enough to be a priest. Are you poor enough to be a priest? But this can apply to every Christian, every disciple of Jesus. Are you poor enough to be a Christian, to be the Lord's disciple? And of course, this reminds us of the teaching of Jesus and reveals as well the path that leads us to this spiritual richness and fullness of the Spirit. When Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit. And isn't it interesting in the sequence for Pentecost that teaches about the Holy Spirit, one of the names given to the Holy Spirit is the Father of the Poor. Father of the Poor. So the, the path by which the Lord leads us to being able to live in this measureless gift of the Spirit is the path that leads to poverty of spirit. Another way to understand that is to have a humble spirit. 
And there's no way for us to be led to that place except through the cross. And here's where the cross takes the form of humiliation. And what do I mean by that? The humiliation of a thousand experiences of our weakness. Many experiences of the pain of our rebellion against dependence on God. It is the experience of our, uh, our, our limitations and failures over and over again that come from leaning upon ourself. This path of humiliation is what leads to this work of grace in us where we become divested of ourselves, of our egotistical self that always wants to dominate, that wants to be in control, that wants to be at the center of everything, always asserting itself in the place of God. And sometimes we wonder why we fight against this. And what we don't realize, because we don't understand the ways of God, is we are actually fighting against our own good, the greatest good that God wills for us. And so this is why Scripture says, God chastises those whom he loves. And this feels like a chastisement. And this is painful, and this is why we, we, we sometimes fight against it. Because of the pain of dying to self, of being divested of our egotistical self, brought to this place of poverty of spirit, being humble of spirit, which leads to this measureless gift of the Spirit given to us, and therefore the greatest riches, richness. Christ became poor for our sake, as Scripture says, in order to make us rich. But we have to enter that poverty, that, that truth of our existence, that without God we can do nothing, without God we are nothing, without God we are deprived of this spiritual richness that God wants to give us by the gift of His Spirit. So sometimes we, again, in our blindness and ignorance, we cling to our rags when God wants to give us this beautiful wedding garment, we cling to what is nothing more than a bag of peanuts when God wants to give us a banquet. We cling to our poor fallen self and God wants to give us a new self filled with this measureless gift of the Spirit by which we are filled with the life of God. With the Spirit comes all the gifts that we need to live the Christian life. By the Spirit, we can be fruitful in, in ways that we could not otherwise, with regard to love, with regard to wisdom, hope, faith, prudence, justice, all kinds of other riches come to us through the Spirit. So my dear friends, this is a good thing for us to understand so we can understand what the grace of God is doing in us so that we might live fully the Christian life in light of the resurrection of Jesus, which is a life of fullness 
in the Spirit, this measureless gift. Amen. So God bless you. Let's pray for each other. Let's pray for this to be fully realized in us. Amen.